Hello, good evening. Welcome to a Monday Night Live edition of the BCSN Sports Wrap. I'm Brian Fulford. That's AD Drew. And this is our favorite time of year, Drew. Is there any better week in the sports calendar than the time from, I'd say, two weeks? Two weeks. The conference tournaments and the first week of the weekend to the end say there's no better 14 day period than the one that we're in right now is there i would have to go with the the time from the celebration bowl to new year's as a rival mm-hmm. i yes, said it's better but if you're a football fan it's definitely a rival Okay, if you're a football fan, I, I get it. I get it. If you're a football fan, I I, I see how that particular period uh, could equate. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know though. I don't know. I I I still don't think. I mean, you know, like I said, I don't know if there's anything particularly better. But uh, as basketball guys, as both who have who have been fortunate enough to coach and. Uh, you referee. I mean, uh, it's it's. Uh, I'll tell you, man. This is this is a beautiful time of the year. So, uh, we got a uh, a show that uh, we are looking forward to. We got a lot of reviews and previews to talk about. Um, I I think I think Drew, this might be we're in unprecedented territory in terms of the number of HBCU teams that are still playing basketball this week can you think of another time where there have been you know by my count by my unofficial count one two three four five six seven eight ten ten eleven twelve twelve teams are still playing postseason basketball can you think of another time Uh, you're struggling too so i'm gonna say no <laughs> you got I mean, me this on is that the, one, bro. I was gonna say this is a bit of an audio. This is there's some audio. There's an audio element to this as well, Drew. That, so that, that was that that, that was no that. audio to come out my mouth. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just yes. you know just want to remind you. Yeah, there's a little bit of yeah. uh, audio that comes with this thing. So I got you. I got you. I uh, want to thank everybody uh, for coming in. However, you're coming in. Uh, hello, already to uh, Tamra T. Appreciate you coming in uh Tamara for jumping in uh, appreciate any and everybody that's watching us on our Facebook uh channels on the Black College Sports Network or the BCSN Sports Wrap Facebook page you might be watching us on YouTube via the Jericho Broadcast Network's YouTube page uh go ahead and hit that thumbs up if you're watching us there or our BCSN Sports Wrap YouTube page you might be doing that as well uh shout out to our our folks Watching us on Instagram, uh, Chazzy727, uh, Body Working, 7785, D-Pitts, D-Watt, 1987, Jazzy of Bel Air. Those are the first ones to jump in. Uh, and we appreciate you guys watching us on Instagram. Or you might be watching us on X, uh, you know, at uh, at my BCSN1, the number one uh, as well. Um, a and T Roy kind of agrees with me, Brian. 
I, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, you, you're you're a football guy. I don't. I find that hard for an AMT guy to say football season is better right now. Well, well when you think about the first two weeks, from week zero to the first first couple of weeks, when you got all the teams playing, even with the money games and all that stuff, the first couple of weeks of football is so exciting because everyone is excited about their team until yes. they get beat sixty five nothing. Right until until the dust settles after week one. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I will say the 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 day or the weekend of football is in itself exciting and an adventure. So now, I'll tell you what's exciting, Brian. It's going to be Thursday and Friday of this oh, week. Oh, yes. Because oh, yes. And, and remember back in the day when you only got the one game and you were nine times out of ten, you were pissed at the one game that you got and you were happy for the cutaway. To yes, yes. To, to, to some other game to give you some yeah. live in-game updates. Uh, when yeah. I discovered, look, it wasn't until I got to college and discovered that, oh, you can go to a bar and watch multiple games. When I discovered that, Drew, it was over. It yeah. was like, what? Because they, just... the they, they had the big 10-foot satellite out back and everything. Yeah, you, on, you can go to a satellite. Roof. Yeah, you could watch multiple games. Uh, this was probably right. Or, yeah, so, I mean, that that. It, just the watching 90s. the growth. Yeah, watching the yeah. growth. I mean, talk about life yeah. a kid as a 90s, man. Just uh thank yeah. God. And now what do you get? You get four different channels um with with their own you get, own you, get, you, get you get CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. And yeah. then that's Thursday. And then on Friday, you get those four, and then you add in the four letter with all of their networks. For the women's matchup, mm -hmm. that starts yeah. on that starts on Friday, also. So I mean, it's just great, and I'm glad they start. They went from starting the women on Saturday to starting the women on Friday, and carried it over to Monday because it used to go Saturday to Tuesday. So you know, which wasn't now, that the question bad. Is, when is the final four for the win? When is the final four and championship? Are they doing them before the men in between, or is it the day after the men? And, and, and you know, they've played with that. It's been Friday, yeah. it's been Friday, Sunday, it's been Saturday, Sunday. Still it's Saturday, been, Monday. No, I, I think they I, did I, Saturday, uh, Sunday. I think they did Saturday, Monday. No, it used it used to be Saturday, Sunday. They would have oh, really? the final four on Friday or oh, Saturday, and then turn around and play the championship on Sunday. I've okay. seen Sunday, Tuesday, Sunday, so, Tuesday. Yep. yep, yeah. So it's it's been a it's, it's been a lot. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's definitely been a lot. Uh, I'm glad you, them boys. Glad you brought up this uh, jersey. Uh, what? Uh, shout out to HBCU.com. Excuse me, HBCU jerseys. Dot com who uh supplied us at the bcsn with this shirt at the uh at the swag tournament and there you see the website there if you want to order a jersey like these he's got football and basketball jerseys this is the basketball jersey and brian this is all one piece it looks like i got a t-shirt on up under this but this is all one piece yeah, yeah. oh it is it's okay the, yeah it's designed it's designed with the with the cut in it to make it look like a basketball jersey that you got a, a t-shirt on up under it so those are the places that he has officially licensed so you can go to hbcujerseys.com a new proud supporter of us here at the black college sports network and just and brian i took this picture just so people could kind of see what was some of the selection that he had you know what they look like for their particular schools that's not every school that he has. Those are just the ones that he had there at the uh, SWAC tournament. Those are all the SWAC schools. Right. All right. Well, hey. And, and, uh, and, and if you see, I don't, I don't know if you can see it in the back. That's actually a replica band shirt from Alcorn in the back uh, behind the Alcorn jersey. There's a Jackson jersey. State one there too, isn't there? There's a Jackson State one. I've seen the, I've seen the Marching 100 one. Okay, uh, that he has a replica of those. I know those are the th or three of the band uh, replicas that he has. So uh, there you go, HBCUJerseys.com. Okay, and they are licensed, Brian. Hey, there we go. Yeah, that's what we love to hear. 
yeah, they are licensed. So part of your money goes back to your university. All right. Well, uh, right. shout out again, hbcjerseys.com. You guys make sure to go check uh, check them out. Yeah. Uh, Brian, before we get into it, uh, e- even though we're a day, we not, we're a day late, but we're not going to be a dollar short with this uh, show, everybody. Uh, and yesterday, we wanted to make sure that we got the bids in for the Division One and had a chance to uh, analyze it. But, Brian, it, it occurred to me, do you know what happened 29 years ago today in the sports world? 29 years ago today. Today is March 18th. Uh, no, I don't, Drew. 1995. Well, does that help you out if I actually give you the year? Instead of you doing Ooh, the math in your head. March 18th. It, was it tournament related? N- not tournament related, but it was related to the sport of basketball. I'm still still I haven't seen it come across my timeline yet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bow out for the sake of time and say no. What what happened? The most two famous words ever uttered in sports. Uh, more famous than can't wait. Yes, more famous than that. Okay, what? The, uh, what? I'm back. Whoa! It happened today. Yeah. Yes. March 18th, 1995. That's right. I was uh in Indianapolis, uh, Chicago Bulls. MJ playing the Pacers. I remember that. Uh, yes, I remember that game. Yeah. Pacers won that game, by the way. <laughs> yeah, a couple of weeks before you went to that double nickel against the Knicks, but uh yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but uh yeah, so and uh, and imagine that was uh pre 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 internet, pre internet, Twitter, social media. So you kind of found out via CNN via actually. Oh, CNN. Yeah, I was gonna I say found out on CNN. What the CNN. Because you you know I, we were in SBI, you know they. They only play news channels on the TVs in SBI. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we were on spring break at that time, though, weren't we? I, who knows, Brian? I think we had we had spring break early in March that year. I don't remember. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Uh, again, shout out to uh, some of the folks jumping in there. Mary 305, Karen Griffin, them boys. Uh, appreciate and say hello to all of you and, and all of the folks watching, however you may be watching. Do us a favor, hit the thumbs up and the like button wherever and however you're watching. So let's get into it quickly. Let's start by just kind of getting back into some of the, the recap of, you know, just a quick recap from the weekend, because obviously the last time we were together, we were going into the start of the Division One tournament, uh, the NAIAs games hadn't been scheduled and actually by the time we went off the air we didn't even know where the division two teams were playing or where they were going um so let's kind of start in the MEAC Drew uh kind of interesting thing in the MEAC Mid Eastern Athletic Conference where we actually get and, and nobody this wasn't on the betting odds sheet but but we actually get back to back champs in the men and the women's bracket which i think more more people were probably surprised that it happened uh on the, in the, on the men's side but on the uh on the women's side um you can see right there uh norfolk state the hold the green and gold the hold the green and gold uh took care of business uh actually a rematch against howard how many years in a row has it been i think this was the third year in a row that norfolk state and howard have met in the finals that sounds right. If it's not three in a row, it's three of the last four. Yeah, and and Norfolk State having won the last two of them, um, you know. So congratulations to the uh, the Spartans, Lady Spartans. Uh, there you can see the great team photo. Always love seeing the team photo and stuff like that. Some good stuff. Uh, and of course, Norfolk State uh, punching their ticket. Uh, Earning a 15 seed in the uh, in the national tournament, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Where they're gonna travel oh, out wow. to the west coast, um, Ooh, all yeah. the way across the country, all the way across the country. And and uh, yeah, I think I think in the selection, 
Yeah, last year, last year, I think they were the one of the first teams to know where they were going. And this year, I think they were the last announcement on the uh, on the selection show. So um, shout out to them, uh, to Norfolk State. Over on the men's side, this is where it was upset city. Um, Did I tell you D-State? Look, they uh, what were the uh, Delaware State's odds? Weren't they were at least plus three? Plus three thousand to win the tournament. I don't know what it were, but I, I told you Delaware State was sneaky good. Yeah, they uh they they take out the number three seed in South Carolina State. They take out the two seed in North Carolina Central. Obviously, the the you know Norfolk State had a uh, twelve game winning streak coming in. Uh, lost the only other team to beat them all conference was Howard, and uh, you know Howard. Howard, you know, held on and and they defeated Dell State. Uh, that was a close game in the second half, Drew. Um, but uh, for the second consecutive year, um, you know, Howard got it done, man. And uh, you know, one of the one of the one of the one of the uh, one of the more successful programs in the, <coughs> in the DC area is Howard University. How about your stats? I saw them boys say, "Did your how did your rebounding stats add up?" You know, I, I am getting ready to go and look at that right now while we continue on with this uh, conversation and go see. And I'm gonna use Delaware State as a uh, test test dummy. Mm. <clears throat> well, um, I, I you know, congratulations again to Coach uh, Blakeney. Uh, they lost their conference player of the year. I think the young man's name was Shy Odom. Uh, he was the MEAC player of the year last year and he uh transferred and so um you know he ended up moving to uh i forgot where he went but just just uh, an interesting year for uh for howard um so um you know we'll talk about where howard will be playing because howard will will uh we we, we kind of knew that the men's were going to be playing in some playing games uh, but it was just a matter of seeing uh, where I, I call it playing games. Do you refer to the first? Do you refer to the games that are played on Tuesday and Wednesday? Have you bought into calling them the first four? Or do you call them the playing game? It, 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 playing game, consolation game, whatever you want to talk about it. Oh, it's it's, it's a, wow. not consolation game, but you know it's it is what it is, Brian. And well, they wanted, to, they wanted to be called the first four. I'm, I'm just asking, are you are you buying in on calling it the first four? I'm glad they went with that because remember that used to be called the first round at one point in time, Brian. And uh, it threw yeah. everybody off. Yeah, yeah, I didn't I didn't like them calling it the the first round. That was kind of disingenuous. I mean, let's just call it what it was, first four. Um, so, uh, yeah, but but uh, we we kind of knew because uh, I think the Miac. And the SWAC were rated two of the lowest rated conferences among uh, conferences in the uh, among 33 different conferences. Um, so yeah, uh, Blue Jacket for life. Uh, are are they are they getting paid for that game? Well, they will if they win. Who is that? Um, Howard. Howard, the teams that play in the first four, because it does count as a as a tournament win. First round victory. First round victory, which gets you a share. Um, so I think yeah. uh as the shares are divided up, and I and I gotta recall I can't recall if that's a a that goes to the conference or does it go to the to the school? I think it's the conference. It goes to the conference. About yeah. The, the conference, yeah. Yeah. So and the school gets a you know a lion's share of it. Right, right, right. I'm sure. I'm sure it is. So yeah. Um so yeah, they there is so and and, and in reality, that's why it, it is sort of important. Look, the we we're we'll get into a lengthy debate debate about how this bracket is set up, but one thing we have to understand the bracket is set up for the power programs. The tournament is set up for the power programs. Now, the smaller conferences. They they get a share by getting wins, and so the the easiest 
the best place to get a win is it's the first four. Is the first four because uh, Howard University, and we'll talk about this a little later. Their opening round opponent is probably the lowest rated team on the board of sixty eight teams. I think they might be the lowest rated team on the board. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, Brian, I want to go back to that uh, rebounding question that the boys uh, asked about. Yeah. And j- we'll just take the two uh, teams that were in the MIAC championship game in Dale State's two victories in their victory against – oh, that's, that's the Howard game, wrong game. That was a loss. In their victory against Central – they had 41 rebounds to 39. Uh, Central did uh, out-rebound them on the offensive boards 20 to 19. And Central had them on second chance points 19 to uh, 14. In the South Carolina State game, they out rebounded South Carolina State 43 33, including, including 18 to 12 on the offensive re, on the offensive board. 18 second chance points for Dale State, 13 second chance points for South Carolina State. And Howard, who we consider was it was a lower seed coming in, in their in their first round match against Morgan State, they out rebounded Morgan State 38 28, including 12 to 4 on the offensive glass, good for an 11 to 2 advantage in second chance points. Against, against Norfolk State, Howard on the glass 30 to 19. They were tied on the offensive uh, board, seven seven each. Uh, Norfolk State did out rebound, uh, outscore them on second chance points, twelve to eight. In the championship game, where the two teams went heads up against each other, Howard out rebounded Dale State 30, 38 to thirty, but Dale State. Did on the offensive glass, fifteen to thirteen, good for fifteen second chance points. To how was eleven second chance points? So it, it kind of held up. The, the the team that had the rebounded advantage put themselves in a better chance to win. Getting back at them boys' is, uh, question, and that's just using the BAC as a sample, right? Um. So, yeah, I appreciate William Graves kind of a little clarification here um, about the the payout and distribution for those who are wondering. Uh, you do get paid for every game uh, that you play as I'm looking at, you know, all of the bids equal two million dollars. So when uh, when you when you play, you get a two million dollar. Um, but I think there's also some additional funds that come in when you advanced per round. So initially the SWAC and me get a $2 million, get $2 million each. That's what each share is worth. And then if I'm not mistaken, I think the, either the rounds or the wins add up, uh, in terms of the amount of money that you, that you get from that. Okay. Let's uh, let's go over to the SWAC. Uh, now, Drew, you were on site for the SWAC tournament. Yes, I was there for the semifinals and the finals. Got in there for the semifinals and Friday and uh, the finals. Where I, so, where, I, where I picked up this cool shirt from HBCUJerseys.com. Shameless oh, exactly. plug. I know. <laughs> okay, let's start over in the women's uh, bracket. Uh, the women, as you can as you can kind of see. Uh, let me, let me everybody see the rest of it. Hold up, huh? I'll say I want everybody to see the rest of it. Oh, okay. 
All right, I'll I'll we'll come back and we'll show the full picture in a second. Um, all right, over on the women's side, swag swag women's tournament uh went chalk on one side of the bracket. Uh we we in uh first round, let's go, let's go kind of just quick an analysis of the first round. As you can see, I thought we we obviously we had an upset. We had Alcorn beating Southern on Friday or on day two, uh the six over the three. But the game that really probably almost became a historic game that didn't become a historic game was Alabama AM and and UAPB where I, look when I got to the TV set drew Alabama AM and was down 54 to 34 took the lead right? 20 point lead and uh just somewhere the late third quarter going into the fourth quarter Alabama AM just threw out a hook and was reeling UAP back in. I think at one point they had outscored them 25 to 6 or 25 to 4 in the fourth quarter, grabbed a lead, actually had grabbed a three point lead on consecutive possessions with some steals. And we were sitting there in our in our text thread marveling at what we were watching. I, we didn't know whether we were watching an epic comeback or a great collapse. Well, Brian, I'm going to take it one step further. I was in the arena during the comeback. Well, oh, you were? Okay. Yeah. And I missed the comeback. Where were you? Because, because when the game was at 20 in the third quarter, I, just, I got up and started wandering. <laughs> around the arena <laughs> and i i was like i i needed to run out to my car and get something i forgot what it, what i went out there to get i'm like wait this game's about over let me go ahead and go get what i need to get out of my car right matter of fact i'll tell you what, what i went to go get a hoodie because it was it was a little cold in there you know they had the ac cranked up in there so i went to go get my hoodie Knowing it was, you know, it was it was coming up on evening time and it was gonna get cooler outside. And I was not expecting them to adjust the temperature because of that. Like this is a good time to go get it. I come back, I'm I'm still wandering around the, the corridor on the outside, and I start hearing all the cheering and all this stuff. And I finally get back down to the media section. I'm like, holy, you know what? This we got a four-point ball game. <laughs> So I, I sat down in media row and, and watched the remainder of the game and I joined the group text because I, I I I heard the dings going off. I wasn't paying attention to them at that point. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on, right? <laughs> so when I, I and then I, I went back and I saw I scrolled back through our group text and I'm like, oh, okay. So then I started joining in the group text also and threw my two cents in. And then as quick as we saw it come, we saw it go. Maybe yeah. I was a jinx, Brian. I should have stayed out. Yeah, see, you, 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 you jinx. You Probably jinx, Dr. Brian. You just, just blame you. Um, but yeah, no. So UAPB, but a big shot though. I think uh, the young lady from UAPB hit a big shot that put him up uh, by three. With um, I don't know. I, I, I don't have the exact. I, I, I and then was, Zay Green took over the last couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that. It, you know, and, and really you were, I mean, cause UAPB shot, they were shooting like ridiculous, a ridiculous number from behind the arc in the first half. Two and a half uh, quarters. Yeah. So two and a half quarters. And so I'm thinking, wow, okay. They're going to be ready for, uh, for Jackson state the next night. Um, at least that's what I was telling myself. Um, yeah, that, that was Speaking of Jackson state, Brian, we all both saw, uh, uh, we had the question, when we had our preview show, have we ever seen a number one lose like that? And in the quarter round, Prairie View gave Jackson State everything that they could handle. Yeah, well, I, I, it was a twenty. So the one thing, like I was on a heater early in terms of some of my 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 picks. Prairie View was a twenty point underdog or you could say Jackson State was a 20 and a half point favorite at that point. I thought that was extremely high given the fact that the teams had just played a week like ago, less before. than a, less than a week ago. 
and it was yeah. a 10-point ball game. And at one point, you know, it was within one or two possessions late in the fourth quarter. So um, that was one of those games where whoever came up with that number really wasn't paying attention, and there was some there was some money to be made there. Um, Jackson State ended up uh, uh, winning that contest, obviously, but um, I think the uh, I'll pull up that that score real quick um, on that uh, on that first night. Uh, I think they only won by seven, like 59 to 52 or something like that. Sounds about some, yeah, 59, 52, something like that. Um, And so, uh, yeah, no, 67, 58, 67, 58. Um, You know, um, nine, yeah. 67, 50, well, 57, I don't know. I'm looking at the website. It says 60. No, that's it. It's nine points. Oh, okay. I got what you're saying. Got you saying. Um, so yeah, final score. UAPB ended up winning 82 to 74. But trust me, uh, that was all game. That's those free throws at the the end end of the game. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Alcorn. Then, like I said, they beat Southern, who was the defending uh, tournament champs from a year ago. They beat them 59 52. So if one upset wasn't enough for you, how about the next night you get another upset? Uh, courtesy of Alcorn State, and uh, it came with uh, two seconds to go, uh, where uh, Alcorn just going here quick to the to the play by play. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here real quick. Late in the uh, late in the fourth quarter. Uh, score was tied at uh, 59-59 with 22 seconds left. Um, and uh, I, I may get the young ladies to Gina, to Gina, or I think it's to Gina Wright from uh, Alcorn. Hit a, hit a left elbow jumper with two seconds to go <laughs> um, to put Alcorn up 61-59. to 59. So um, a day after... Alcorn State's men got knocked out. The women <laughs> advanced to the championship game. But uh, by that point in time, we had already seen the dominance of Jackson State women. And uh, they really kind of handled business there in the championship game, Drew. Pretty impressive stuff by the Lady Tigers. Another, They held another- Alcorn to single digits in the first two quarters. And 11 points in the third quarter. Yeah. Yeah. So congratulations to uh, Coach Reed, Jackson State. Second perfect SWAC season in the last three years. 18-0, and 0, two, let me see, in 2022, perfect season this year. And, of course, last year, their only loss came Dang in the one. semifinals of the SWAC tournament. So an incredible and then, run. And then back that up a year before that, Brian, their only loss was in game one of the season. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that that's the, that's the run that the Jackson State women's program is on right now. And uh, I think a lot of people have, uh, have confidence in Jackson State. Most valuable player. Uh, went to um, Adriana uh, Double A. Avent, Double A. Now, you know what's interesting? She's the young lady who I believe last year as a freshman for Texas Southern was lighting it up. But, I mean, Texas Southern women was a bad team last year, and she was the bright star. So to see her transfer over to Jackson State, I was like, oh, rich get richer. Eh, great. Um, she really, She really poured it on in the tournament, just adding to their already ridiculous depth. I don't think she, she doesn't even start, does she, Drew? I think she comes off the bench. I think she did start. Okay. At least I, in I, the- okay. So, anyway, um, there you see the uh, all-tournament team at the end of the night, uh, Amaya Simmons for Alabama a and Look, she had like 33 in that almost knocked and that almost upset. And, and if didn't her and green go for 30 in that game? Oh, yeah. Both, both of them went for, 
uh, 30 something. Uh, Zay Green, of course, all tournament team. Destiny Brown of Alcorn uh, State. She's a player. Uh, yeah. Tiana Bowler of Jackson State. And of course, Avent of Jackson State as well. Yeah. Them boys confirmed for me. Avent doesn't start. Oh, but next year she will. <laughs> so, oh, next year she will. But and the only reason she doesn't start is because there's just so much talent in front of her. But, you know, that's the ja Jackson State. Is, it's just talent, talent rich program. Uh, so we'll talk about Jackson State and their seating uh, coming up here a little bit later. Uh, let's jump over to the men real quick, Drew, because uh, uh, as mentioned, uh, you had the upset. You had the upset of the Alabama A&M Bulldogs over the number two seed, Alcorn State in day one. Uh, Bethune knocked off Southern. Um, uh, everything kind of went. Huh? That was a mild upset. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say a mild upset. Uh, Texas, Texas Southern gets to the championship game for I, – I went back and tracked this, Drew. Nine of the last ten SWAC tournaments, Texas Southern has been in the championship game. Can I ask a stupid question? Yeah. Was, Par was Prairie View in that number 10 just out of curiosity just to see if the state of Texas is that dominant? Uh, you know what? I didn't even pay attention to the whole state of Texas thing, but I think, yes, they were. I think Prairie View was in, in the finals that one year that Texas Southern was not. Yeah. And, and so that when we jokingly talk about it being the Texas Southern Invitational or the Texas Invitational, that, <laughs> Texas Invitational. Yeah. Now you understand why, but, but shout out to Grambling State making history, Drew, um, by, uh, winning the SWAC, earning their first ever, first ever. And, you know, you can go back to being a part of the SWAC 8, being a part of the SWAC 10. Never had they won the SWAC basketball tournament and made it to the NCAA tournament. I mean, this is a program that had won an NAIA national championship back when uh, Willis Reed, right? Yes, late 50s, early 60s, somewhere. Right yeah, there. yeah. Um, so pretty historic moment for Grambling State. And, you know, um, after winning back-to-back -back regular season titles, this year they got it done. Um, it, real quick, I want to give you – because you were there for everything. I want to give you a chance to kind of talk and comment just, if you would, on – uh, the whole scene. I mean, what, what you enjoyed, what you liked, maybe didn't like uh, about that uh, championship Saturday. Uh, well, I'll, I'll go over both days. I love the in arena promos and fan engagement from the, from, uh, I believe is, is peak. Is it peak marketing? Uh, the peak group is it? I'm trying to remember. Is that the name of the group that does the marketing for the SWAC? Oh, but, Peak Sports, uh, the company that yeah. uh, we used to work with. I'm very familiar with them. But go ahead. I, I don't don't quote me on that. But whoever the marketing company was, you know, they had their uh, they had their sound man, their hype man, doing different different promos, different giveaways. Uh, they had a promo where you spelled out. Uh, but they, they had a couple of different ones. You uh, let's see. They they had the old with size twenty shoes. You had to put on the the jersey and the and the shoes oh, and the yeah. shorts. Go down make and make a oh make God. a layup and dribble and, and come back to half court and everything. They had that one. They had the you know layup free throw three pointer. Then they had the one instead of playing a horse, you played Starry. Oh my goodness, that's cute. But but here's the thing with the starry one, uh, Brian. Sponsor, yeah. The the one with the starry one was four thousand dollars. Well, I hope so. They're a major sponsor, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the winner got a thousand, the loser got two hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. And mm. they did this once a game. Every yeah. game. Fourteen games, Brian. 14 games without the, the and, and, five, five, 12, 50. Huh? 
14 times 1250. Oh, because a thousand okay. to the winner, two fifty to the loser. Oh wow. Okay. Well, hey, I mean, so if you if you were in the building, you had a chance to win. I mean, how are they calling people down? Did you have to like fill out a a form, a registration form, or something like that? I'm glad you asked that, Brian. This is not a setup, y'all. Me and this guy, we were down on the first row, and I had, but of course, I had my credentials around my neck. He didn't. So. Who does the guy come and pick to go out there on the court? Ah, the, the guy, guy who I've been him. talking to, the guy who I've been talking to for the last hour, who did not have a credential. Was he this a media joke, guy? No, it, 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 he's not a media guy, but I, I, I've, he, he hangs around the tournaments. If you understand what I'm saying, I've seen him okay, at, gotcha. at different different HBCU basketball events. Okay. And you know, so so we we've got a rapport. We know each other and everything. You know, we can talk basketball because he's a basketball coach also. Mm -hmm. And they pick him, and of course, he goes out and wins the thousand dollars. At this time, at this point in time, neither one of us knew that, that the contest was for a thousand dollars. And he was like, "Man, why don't you come out there and, and, and shoot with me?" He's like, "I don't want to go up against this kid, man." It's like, at least you gonna give me some competition. And I'm like, damn! I wish I would have. I wish he would have uh, picked me to come back. And then he had went. To, he went to the bathroom or something, and was taking too long. And you know they had to, you had to fill out the waiver form. And I'm sitting up there like, damn! If he don't come back, I wonder if he gonna ask me to go out there on the court. And he came back just in time to fill out the waiver form. Bro, I could have been a thousand dollars richer, man. Oh man, uh, it's tough to. That's a tough one. Bad beat. It's a bad beat, Drew. Bad bad. Beat. It, it, it ain't like I had it, man. I wasn't even mad at him. Um, but uh, yeah. So the uh, the Tigers of uh, Grambling State um, win the uh, win the uh, win the SWAC. Uh, most valuable player, uh, Trey Michael Moten of uh, Grambling, and then you can see the uh, I'll pull up the all tournament team. As well, uh, Lorenzo Downey of Alabama AM, and uh, Derek Carter Hollinger of Bethune, uh, Jonathan C. I think it's Cisse of Texas Southern, Kentavious Dozier of Grambling, and of course, Trey Michael Moten of Grambling. Okay, that I got a trivia question here for you, Drew. Talk to me. that with Grambling State winning. The SWAC mm -hmm. that leaves one school in the current SWAC 12 that has never been to the NCAA tournament via a conference automatic qualifying bid, meaning they've never won their conference. And, and you're including the two imports from the MEAC in this. I said of the SWAC 12. Any guesses out there, you guys in the chats? Any guesses? Who is the last remaining SWAC team that has never won oh. an NCAA tournament? Alcorn. Oh, I'm going to give you one guess. You only get one guess because if you start giving multiple oh, guesses, you'll start to Alcorn. Alcorn is my guess. Yeah, Alcorn is your guess. You would be incorrect, Drew. You'd be incorrect. So now you're down to – everyone's now down to 11 teams. Don't Google search it. Don't Google search it. So you guys, you guys, I, I'm going to come back and ask you when we get back into uh, the portion where we talk about the tournament. Um, Kylan's one guess. I'm going to say, I'm not going, I'm not going to post it. So if you're in the chat room, um, I'm not going to post it. Uh, many people still haven't seen the correct answer yet. For those who are in the chat room, you guys okay. throwing now, darts at the wall. You, 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 you throw it, you giving them hints. Let's go to break to see if you yes, get yes. it. I'll excited. give you a chance. So don't Google it now. Just kind of think about it and just think about what I just said. Y'all on the think honor about, system. Think about what I said. They have never won like their sports. conference tournament to enter the NCAA as an automatic qualifier. So again, the question is: There is only it's one. Is there any sport? Is there any sport? 
So just basketball. Okay, we're talking basketball. So okay, I'll make sure. After, okay, so he let me rephrase that. the question. After Grambling State won for the first time and punched their ticket, there is now one school in the SWAC among the 12 schools that has never and this is I did a check this morning, so I hope I'm not wrong. Otherwise, this is gonna fall flat on my face. There is one school that has never earned a ticket or a bid to the NCAA tournament as a conference tournament champion. I'll share the answer with you on the other side. You're watching the BCSN Sports Wrap. We'll be back in just a moment. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. As we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dashboard, as well as the upcoming week of HBCU sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watts and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website www.slowburnwaco.com That's www. Dot slowburnwaco.com All right, welcome back to the BCSN Sports Wrap. Brian and AD here on a Monday Night Live as we uh, review the uh, conference tournaments uh, in the SWAC and MEAC. Talk a little bit about the results from the uh, Division Two and NAIA, um, and uh, then start to do a little preview of uh, postseason play. Uh, as of right now, today we have twelve HBCUs that are still playing postseason basketball. Record number, I think, for this time of year. So uh, congratulations to all those teams. Um, before I give an answer to the question that's on the floor, let me tell you guys about a tournament pool challenge that myself and my brothers over at the ONG Strike Zone are doing on ESPN. We're doing an ESPN men's tournament challenge. Uh, it's a private group. Uh, so... You can go to those of you. I know a lot of you are going to put in brackets. Drew, how many brackets do you think you're going to do? How many brackets did you do last year? How many how many brackets do you think you might do this year? I usually do about four or five of them. I'm not a big, big person. Now, when you say how many brackets, I'll do about four or five different brackets, but I may enter those brackets into multiple places, if that makes gotcha. sense. Right. Yeah, me me as well. I think I've learned how to narrow it down to two. I you one of the things I like to do. I usually try to do a bracket within the first twenty four hours. Like I haven't done my first bracket. Like I'll, I'll my first thoughts, and then 
I will kind of go and do some analysis over the next two days and kind of see what other people are doing. If anybody's giving any unique perspectives that I really agree on and then go from there. Um, yeah. So that's what I do. But uh, the I guys, normally do, uh, I normally do a chalk bracket where yeah. pretty much everything is chalk. Then I do my, then I do the opposite of it. I do my upset bracket where I go and figure out which 512 is going to be the one. And I may pick a couple of which six eleven, you know, which four thirteen. I may go through and I'll go through and start doing those, and you know, get those get those down. And then I kind of then I start then I start looking at the numbers and you know all, all of that stuff because the first two I just go straight off the dome without any type of research or anything like that. Right. Yeah. Well, um, if you're looking, if you're doing all these brackets, I want to encourage you. And a lot of people are going to do them on ESPN. You're going to maybe use CBS. Those are probably the top two. I know the NCAA has a, a bracket thing, but usually most people do ESPN or CBS, I would say. But if you're on ESPN, come join our pool. Me and the guys over at the ONG Strike Zone, we've got a we've got a bracket tournament challenge. Uh, there you can see the group name, the ONG Strike Zone friends. The password to join our group, very simple, Rattlers, capital R. We are asking for a $10 entry fee. So it's a $10 per bracket. You, we're only going to take two because I think if you start doing more than two brackets, Drew, that means you, you're kind of you're, – you're, you're gaming the game because I think if you, you can put in multiple brackets and obviously you can have multiple champions, right? So while the money that you may donate is nice, we try to make it fair – uh, so two brackets max. Uh, of course. Are oh, you uh, putting that out to the uh, to the guys from uh, BCSN also? I will make it. I've made it available in as many places as I could uh, earlier today via the ONG, and I'll be tweeting it out some more. Um, so fifty percent of the funds from this, however many people we get, they're going to go into uh, FAMU's Rattler Athletic Fund. Uh, and and then uh, twenty five percent of the pot will go sorry. to the first place. Sorry, A and T Roy, <laughs> but you can still come join us, A and T Roy. I mean, look, you can win twenty five percent. We get if we get enough people. I mean, twenty five percent is a still a good number, and fifteen percent uh, to second place. And so you can you can use a cash app. You can use the uh, uh, hash the dollar sign my B, my JBM my BCSN on cash app. Or you can scan that QR code uh, to Square Link. And uh, I've also tweeted this out. If you go to our profile page at ONG Strike Zone, you can uh, you can see the uh, link there in the tweets. And so I want to encourage you guys to, to join us in our tournament pool. Our tournament challenge via ESPN, the ONG Strike Zone, airs Wednesday night, uh, 9 uh, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right here on the Black College Sports Network. Okay. Got to answer yeah. to the trivia question now, Drew. I, I see some people have, have tried to answer the question. And again, to restate the question, who is the only men's basketball team in the SWAT to never earn a bid to the NCAA tournament? Uh, William Graves said, uh, let's go here. Let's see. I had a couple people say FAMU. 305, William Graves. Nope, FAMU has gone to the NCAA tournament. As but members it, of the MEAC. Yeah, it was in the MEAC, so that still kind of counts. Uh, UAPB has been to the tournament, Kylan. They have. Uh, the exact year escapes me, but they've been. Valley, you would think Valley. Tamra, no, Valley has been to the tournament. Uh, Valley has been. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. Uh, Tamara with a second guess. Alabama State. Nope, Alabama yep. State. They've been yeah. to the tournament. They've been to yeah. the tournament. Uh, Mary 305 throws out Alabama. Yep. Nope, our, our good friend Coach Petaway Coach took Alabama a and to I the, do that. the tournament. Yeah. Oh, so I, we don't, I took out half the field, Drew. You got any? Well, I'll give you one more guess. One last guess before I reveal it. I know Southern has been there under uh, with Avery Johnson and uh, Coach Ben Job. 
uh, uh, we've already eliminated Alabama schools. I know, but I know Bethune has Bethune in there. Let, uh, let me hold on that Bethune one right there. Let me hold on that. Uh, okay, we, we, we deal with Alcorn's been there. We know Jackson State has been there. Who am I missing? We know the two Texas schools have been there. Well, uh, yeah, married through a five. They they won seven of the last ten. So they yeah, they've been know the two the Texas. Tournament. I know the two Texas schools have been there. Uh, obviously, them boys Grambling just got in, so they're off the list. They were one of they were. Boy, process of elimination is back at Bethune. It is Bethune Cookman. Tamra T got it. Yes, it is wow. Bethune Cookman. Never I Bethune had been there. Never have they ever been to the NCAA tournament. Never on the winning side. on the men's side. On the men's side, never winning. Uh, never winning as a member of the MEAC, and of course, they've only been in the SWAC for about three seasons now. Never having won it in the SWAC. Yes. So, just a little fun. That's a fun little trivia. Now, if you want to have some fun with some people in was your that own little trivia, or was that shade, Brian? I was pure trivia. I it, I I smiled when I saw it. I so uh, there was no shade. It just is what it is. It just is what it is. So, um, I did also on the women's side in terms of schools that have never been in the SWAC. There, I think there are three. There are three schools among the twelve in the SWAC that have never been uh, to the NCAA tournament. Uh. Yeah, so is fam you on that list? Uh no, fam you's been to the tournament. Fam you's okay. been to the NCAA. I couldn't remember the women had been yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Been there. Uh bah. <laughs> D Lob says, How many how many victories has the swag gotten in the last 25 years? That is not the question. No, we're not asking that question. Yeah. I, I I know at least I'll, two. At least two, because Texas Southern in the in the years of the first four, they won at least two. Yeah, I don't think anybody's won the first round since uh, Ben Joe. Uh, what year was that? Whew, that had to be in the late eighties, early nineties when Joe was uh, there, because Avery was was going one. I think Avery was going in eighty seven when they won. I don't know if they won after that. I think that was eighty seven, eighty eight, somewhere around there. Hmm. Um, 2010. D. Lob says 2010. Um, yeah. Oh, UAPB got a win in the first four. Win what in 2010? Oh yeah. Okay. So there's three. There's three that we can count right right offhand. Yeah. So that's a great question. Uh, D. Lob asked. I would say it's. Uh, I would say it's under five. How about that? Under five in the swag. Under five in the past 25 years. I would say under five. Five or less. Five or less, so yes. I don't know what it, what it, whatever you want to do with that, you know. Man, let's let's move off of it. Let's move off yeah. these big boys. Let's, and get a small boost of love. Okay, Division Two's happened. Okay, so the Division Two playoffs uh, started this past week. Actually, the announcement came out Sunday evening, late Sunday evening after we went off the air. Right. Um, Those games, I believe, started on Thursday. It probably did. Yeah, they their tournament runs a similar well it's not exactly the same but i know the first two rounds run uh over the weekend from the thursday to the sunday and of course the division two is set up differently where they actually have region competition eight regions and so from the regions you end up with an elite eight and so that elite eight is really sort of the field that goes to their national site. Um, we have one school out of the Division Two teams that's still playing, and yeah, that well, is people. it's male or it's women, women. women. Yeah, only no, I'm women saying male and females out of both of them, out of both genders, only one team remaining that happens to be female. That's what I mean. Right. That's what I was saying. Right. The Fayetteville State uh Lady Broncos or the Fayetteville State Broncos, who were a three seed in the Atlantic region, of course, had a great record. I think uh 27 and 2 coming out of the CIAA. Um 
They opened up against Indiana, Pennsylvania. Uh, they won their opening round contest 72 to 63. Uh, Anila Bryant, who was uh, all everything in the CIAA, uh, had a game high 23 points. Advancing into round two against Fairmont State, uh, the Broncos, who were trailing at the half by three, used a 26 to 18 fourth quarter to beat Fairmount. 70 to 62. Uh, Bryant, once again, the game high. She had 26 points in that contest. And so now the, the Broncos of Fayetteville State will play tomorrow. Yeah, they'll play tomorrow in the region Atlantic region finals uh, against number one seed Gannon. Um, Gannon, they, they've got a pretty powerful men's program as well, but they were a one seed in the Atlantic. Uh, they play them tomorrow at five o'clock. So they play Fayetteville state play Friday, Saturday, this past weekend, or look, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, I think Thursday, Saturday, because if I recall, the uh, they I know they played the round two game against Fairmont on Saturday. I that just is, don't. That, that is on, the I, I, I pull up. Yeah, that I have ever seen in Division Two. That's what now. The oddest schedule I have ever seen in Division Two. Um, so they played Friday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, they played Friday against Indiana, PA. And let's see, the game against Fairmount, was it? It must have been. No, maybe it was Sunday. Hold on, I'm going to pull it up here. Friday. It was Saturday, yeah. So they played back-to-back nights. Friday right, which Saturday. is normal. Interesting. And then they Norm- played Tuesday. Normally you play, right, normally they'll play back-to-back, day off, and then the regional championship. I've never seen two days off between the, the regional semifinal and the regional final. Okay. In all my years, uh, I'm covering so, Division Two. Yeah, if you want to watch the game, it is a pay per view streaming um, that you'll have to that you'll have to use. Um, I think it's like nine, Gannon, nine, nine, something like that. Is it for the day or the tournament? I think it's for the. I look. I saw the day. Uh, Gannon is a team. That, yeah, Gannon has gone thirty-four and two this season. Fayetteville State currently with a record of twenty-nine and two. So the Broncos are looking for their thirtieth win. Uh, I'm just gonna bump over here. They're running through SoundCloud. Uh, you can do pay-per-view for the game for nine dollars and ninety-five cents plus tax. Now you can also, if you you know really want to support and you think Fayetteville State's going to go deep, you can get a NCAA pass for every game remaining in the tournament for twenty nine ninety five. Again, that's for the Division Two, twenty nine ninety five. So it depends on what you want to do. You can you can support heavy or you can watch uh, deep. Uh, so congratulations to Fayetteville State. We're rooting on them on Tuesday. Some of the other games that took place on the women's side, Drew, <clears throat> West Virginia State, they were an eight seed in the Atlantic region. They lost to that one seed, Gannon, that Fayetteville State is going to be playing. They lost to them in the opening round, 73 to 53. <clears throat> also on the women's side, Miles College, they were an eight seed lost to one seed Valdosta 66 to 55 in the South region. I think there were just three women's teams, right? That that would be it. And if were it not for me being at the SWAC tournament, I would have been over in Valdosta watching that game Mm -hmm. and covering that game. Okay. Moving over to the division two men's side of things. Um, The highest seeded team or, uh, maybe you want to say, maybe the correct way of saying it is the lowest seeded team among HBCUs was Clark Atlanta. They were a six seed in the South region. 
They took on Florida Southern. They lost 80 to 72. Um, that that same Florida Southern team is playing in the region finals. Uh, a seven seed was West Virginia State. West Virginia State, one of the only schools to get their men and women's team into the tournament of the Division II tournament. Uh, they were in the Atlantic region. Now, they took on California of Pennsylvania. They lost 96-80 to 80 to them. A uh, pair of eight seeds, Lincoln PA, winners of the CIAA. They lost to one seed Gannon. Of course, Gannon uh, on the men's side was a one seed, just like the women were. Uh, they lost 97 to 63. And then Benedict, an eight seed in the South region, taking on number one, Nova Southeastern, who I think is like a defending champs, if not last year, two yeah. years ago. They are the defending champions. Okay. Uh, Benedict lost 115 to 95. So Benedict put up some points. Problem is they couldn't stop anybody on the other end. I hate to say it that way. Yeah. yeah. And you just explained why the crazy schedule with uh, in the Atlantic region because Gannon had both the men and the women's tournament to host. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Um, of course, I think the last division two men's national or women's national champion that we've had drew was, uh, was a Virginia union on the women's side, right? I don't think when's the last, it's been a while since we've had a division two men's champion. I thought union was the last one on the men's side and that's been a minute. I think the, the team that's advanced the furthest was back in 14 when Tuskegee made it to the uh to the final eight. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Um so we'll be uh we'll be all all eyes in watching uh watching and supporting Fayetteville State. All right, let's take a quick break as we catch up. We're gonna come back and talk about the NAIA results. Uh we still have a team we still have a team in the NAIA tournament to pay attention to. Uh, so we'll talk about them on the other side. And I see uh, Lawrence said, Shaw, what year was that? That Shaw, was that a championship run for Shaw? We'll answer that question on the other side of the break. How about that? <laughs> Let's step away, Drew, come back. Uh, you're watching the BCSN Sports Wrap on a Monday Night Live. Uh, recapping the uh, the uh, SWAC MEAC tournament, Division Two and NAIA tournaments, and looking at a preview ahead of the postseason play still to come for our HBCUs. We'll be back in just a moment. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is always Ultra Thins reinvented with the always triple protection system. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster absorbs even more so you can feel dry and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay. Call Cuvay.
looking for the latest information on Southern University sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show, exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. T. Madden & Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. T. Madden & Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turn my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madden and Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123. Stride K-12 powered schools are ready to put over 20 years of being a leader in online education to work for you. Dive into curriculum design for the online classroom. Team up with state certified teachers nice. trained in virtual instruction. Take control of your child's education journey. Discover the power of personalized learning with a leader experienced in preparing kids for a future they can be excited about. Take charge. Stride K-12. Enroll now for the fall. All right, welcome back to the BCSN Sports Trap Monday Night Live right here as we uh, recap the weekend of conference and national tournaments and look ahead to this upcoming week. want to encourage everybody, if you would, wherever you're watching us, on Facebook, on X, on uh, YouTube, uh, on Instagram, we say hello to you. If you can, hit a thumbs up and a like button. We'd appreciate you. Uh, doing that when you can uh i just lost drew um so while while i just kind of catch back up here and see lawrence kind of fills in the gap here for us tells us yeah shaw uh shaw women uh won the 2012 national championship uh so i, I guess was that the that was the most recent Division two national championship. I know there were some runs there. I know uh, for some teams that finished runner up, maybe it was, uh, uh, maybe it was um, Virginia union. If I recall uh, the last time, the last time we had a team make a, make an appearance there. So uh, in the national championship game, that is, uh, Okay, so the NAIA, which started uh, on the 15th, started on uh, Friday. Uh, so that's why it was such a busy, I mean, the 15th of Friday was such a busy weekend in HBCU basketball on all, on all levels. Uh, uh, not enough teams won games this year, though, sadly, unfortunately. Uh, we didn't get the kind of uh, national results that we had hoped for, but we got a few teams that we can keep our eye on. One of those teams was the uh, number one overall seed in their quadrant, uh, also the number two team in the nation on the men's side, and that's the Langston Lions. They were hosting uh, some games in their quad, and so just to familiarize yourself, if you're not with the NAIA they basically take uh, four four teams, put them in one site, and so that's essentially your first round and your second round games. And then the 16 sites, the winner from each of the 16 sites play in the national championships, which are in Kansas City, Missouri, at Municipal Auditorium. Uh, today's Monday, I think beginning Thursday, March 21st. So they'll go from March 21st to the 26th in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, so you can kind of see the, 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 the differences in the tournament from the NCAA to the Division II to the 
NAIA. All of them are a little bit different in their own unique way. Um, so Langston, the one seed in their quadrant, took on a 15 seed from Bellevue, uh, had no problems taking care of that school from out of Nebraska, 179 to 40, uh, and then turned around and played Ave Maria from Florida. Uh, they beat them by 30 points, 91 to 61. And so they advanced to the to the national championship. I'm trying to look here and see if I can if I can take a look at when when they play and who they play. Um because I think there might even be some reseeding that occurs. So uh Langston will actually take on LSU Shreveport. Uh, I believe they are from out of the southern states. Um, uh, either the southern states or Red River. I got to take a look here. Drew's not with me right now. I, I know he's to handling some business, but I think he gets back. But LSU Shreveport of Louisiana, uh, that's who Langston plays. First game on Friday. So Friday afternoon, 1 o'clock. That's Friday, March 22nd, 1 o'clock. Uh, you can watch the uh, in, the NAIA Championship Sweet 16 as Langston will look to advance further than they did last year. It was in this round where uh, a very good Langston team got knocked off in the first round. So if I'm not mistaken, I think LSU Shreveport won, uh, may have won their, uh, may have won their, conference and again I, I think the conference that they played in was the uh SSAC I'm just taking a look at the championship bracket here and see if I can kind of forecast and take a look at where Langston might be playing and who might be some potential matchups for the Lions head coach Chris Wright um Doing a great job with them. Again, Langston, one of two schools to uh, to win over 30 games this past year. Uh, so as I, as I kind of just glance at the bracket here, uh, they are on the other side of Grace, Indiana, which Grace was a one seed. So uh, potentially... Uh, now, LSU Shreveport is a 12 seed, so that's a team that knocked off a five, knocked off a four to get to the round of 16. A potential conference opponent may be staring at them in the quarterfinals, so Langston might have to play Arizona Christian in the quarterfinals, and so... Uh, it, it is it is interesting to shape up and see uh, that the that the uh, Langston Lions could find themselves in the semifinals. The quarterfinals will take pay, take place on March 23rd. The semifinals on the 25th. So you may wonder, well, what about some of the other teams, Brian? What about? I mean, there was a host of teams from out of uh, some HBCUs that went. Uh, in fact, there were five schools that went on the men's side. Unfortunately, Langston was the only team that won. The closest game or the closest, the team that gave it the best shot might have been Philander Smith, a 15 seed going up against a two seed Cumberlands. Philander Smith, 21 and 9, 14 and 4, winners of the GCAC, lost 97 to 96. Um, uh, tough, tough break, uh, as I kind of just glance at the, uh, play-by-play -play options for Philander Smith. Uh, it was a nip and tuck ball game, uh, close game all the way throughout, uh, late about midway through the second half, uh, Philander's down by at least nine, uh, cut it to within a possession or two, um, found themselves down nine again. With about seven or eight minutes to go, cut the lead back down to three. Um, 
just was never able to grab the lead like they needed to. Um, you know, even late in the ball game, uh, it, it was a close ball game on two or three different occasions. This game got to as high as seven or eight, but Philander Smith found their way, um, whittled it down all the way to within one point on a three pointer with four seconds to go. Um, even what even was able to to force um, their opponent to miss a pair of free throws, but uh, a late three point shot by Jordan Thomas at the buzzer uh, was no good. So uh, a 15 seed Philander Smith almost pulled off the upset. A uh, 10 seed Tugaloo took on seven seed Tennessee Southern. Tugaloo <laughs> lost. 91 to 84. 9C Texas College lost to Point Park of Pennsylvania 84 to 71. And Florida Memorial who was a 2 seed a 2 seed lost to 15 seed Evangel of Missouri 91 to 76. Uh tough break there as uh AD Drew AD Drew's back. AD, anything, uh, any, uh, any, any comments there regarding those, uh, those uh, NEIA or just Langston being in sort of the position where they're at again under head coach Chris? I'm going to say the one that kind of disappointed me was Florida Memorial coming out of the Sun Conference. And I believe they were the only Sun Conference team that lost on the opening day, as I think the Sun had four in. They had Ave Maria, Kaiser. I think they had five. Thomas, Sun had was five. Five, five yeah. yeah. And only six teams make the conference tournament in that, in that conference. Right. So five of the six teams that made the tournament uh, were in the – in the field, I believe, but I believe Florida Memorial was the only one who lost in the uh, in tournament, especially as a number two seed. That kind of disappointed me. I thought they would at least get that uh, first round victory, you know. But you're a number two seed, and under normal circumstances, two seeds are hosting, but. Because mm -hmm. St. Thomas had, and I don't know if this is fact or not, but St. Thomas, who's also in the Sun Conference, mm -hmm. whose campus is a mile or two from Florida Memorial, was a host. So mm -hmm. maybe the NAIA did not want to have two hosts in the same city, but to send your number two seed to Texas to play it's their tough. opening round match. I've got a little bit of a problem with that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, also the yeah, other no, 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 is, big, big disadvantage. No, without a doubt. I mean, big disadvantage. Yeah. It, you know, there, there were some sites probably closer, but the sites that were closer all had higher seeds, you know, number one seeds. So right. what are they to do? The Florida, which leads to the question, did Florida Memorial even put in a bid to be a first round host? That's yeah. That That's the question. That, yeah. That, that, that would be, that would be a question that I would have to ask. Did, did they put in a bid to be a first round host? Because that was a significant disadvantage. They, I think, they may have been the only team on that in that re, in that uh pod that probably had to fly, if they even flew. Mm, Jesus, I, I, if we're talking NAIA, Brian, I'm just being I'm being real when I say that. I get, I get you. I know what you're saying. Yeah. I'm curious as if they actually busted all the way to Texas. Ooh, Jesus. Yeah, we'll have to, I, you know what? I have to call, uh, I have to reach out to the SID and kind of inquire about that just for uh, maybe it's, uh, I'll, I'll 
maybe it's something to ask that I can find out and uh, and mention. Uh, I'll mention uh, maybe next week. Maybe next week. Uh, yeah. Let me jump over. Let me jump over to the women's side, if I could, for a second. Or, or I, I didn't want to take away. I didn't know if you still had a point or any or any other notes that you wanted to speak on regarding um, the men's side before I jump over to the women. Langston did what I thought they would do. They had a little trouble in – I can't remember which game it, uh, it was, Brian, because I was watching Langston while I was in the SWAC tournament. I was watching Langston on my iPad while I was – trying to watch the game that was in front of me kind of up and down looking at the game. But I know one of those games, uh, they were only up by two points at the half. I can't remember who it was, but then they opened up a can in the second half on on whoever that opponent was. So Langston, Langston's going to be a force to reckon with. I hope they can – I mean, I'm all in on Langston in the NAI. It, it's mm-hmm. just that simple. I'm hoping that Langston gets to that uh, gets to the championship game, and I will determine by about Wednesday or Thursday whether I am going to buy the entire rest of the NAIA, which I think I'm going to make the investment because I have that much confidence in in Langston. Ave Maria was the uh, team. I said Ave Maria, uh, Karen. I know it was Ave Maria, St. Thomas, Kaiser, Florida Memorial. Mm-hmm. Was it Southeastern? That's the team that I'm missing. Southeastern, yeah, yeah, yeah. Southeastern uh, is the team that I'm that I'm missing out of that conference. That I believe. Um, uh, did you? Did, and and of course, you heard the the Philander Smith. So, like Philander so I, Smith yes, almost I, pulled off the 15 upset. Um, had a it shot. Failed. I mean, you know, you 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 foul. You're down one. You foul. You send them to the free throw line. They they miss both free throws, so they give you an opportunity. Um, we couldn't get Philander to pull off the upset, so we can get the balance. Yeah, you know, 15 knocked off Florida Memorial. It'll be nice to see Philander pull off the uh, Philander Smith pull off the upset themselves. So all eyes on Langston uh, University again. They play Friday, March 22nd, against LSU Shreveport. Um, that's a one o'clock game, one p.m. And I don't know that's if that's central, one. Is that Central or Eastern? Oh, good question. Um, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? If it's on the NAIA website, that's where that's I'm. That's gonna be Central Time. That's gonna okay. be Central Time. Two p.m. Eastern. Okay, good stuff. Good to know. Um, I'll quickly mention the NAIA women's teams because uh, unfortunately, the four schools that lost or that went lost. Uh, the the lowest or the best seeded team was Langston, um, the Lady Lions. They lost eighty one to seventy eight to Spring Arbor in a matchup of eight versus nine. Um, Rust, the Lady Bearcats, were a ten seed taking on seven seed Dakota Wesleyan. They lost eighty six to seventy five. Uh, Fourteen seed Xavier out of Louisiana. Um, they lost to number three seed John Brown, sixty-one to fifty, and sixteen seed Fisk University making their first ever appearance in the NEIA. They lost to one seed, uh, and I think defending champion uh, Indiana Wesleyan. They lost one hundred to sixty-nine. So unfortunately, Drew, we didn't get a team to get a win like we have the last few years. Uh, on the women's side, but a um, uh, little disappointing. Thought we might get at least one. Yeah, so. All right. Um, let's see. Looking at our time here, let's see if we can uh, push forward. Any any other notes regarding the games that happened before we, before we start to look ahead here to what's in front of us? Anything you want to to touch on uh, uh, of the games that have played or were played over the last week. No, I just want to uh, give shout outs to those kids who, uh, who, who sacrifice. Uh, one thing people don't understand when you play college basketball, men or women, 
sports like basketball or tough sports because they are two semester sports. You yeah, start, start yeah. in, one, in one semester, you finish in the other semester. And honestly, you may have maybe six weeks, eight weeks tops where you're not engulfed in that, in that sport throughout your whole academic year. Those first couple of weeks in August, uh, while you're getting classes together and stuff like that. And then from whenever you lose in your tournament or win out to in April 1st of May, whenever finals are over with, that's really about it. You lose your spring break. You, you lose your Christmas break. Yep. You lose your Thanksgiving break. Yeah. Yeah. You lose, so, you, you lose a lot there as a, <laughs> as, as a college basketball player yeah. and, and coach. You lose, yeah. you lose a lot of time that other people get. You know, football players, they going to get spring break. Nobody's doing spring football over spring break. Baseball players, they're going to get Thanksgiving break. They're going to get fall break. They don't even get fall break for basketball. Get Christmas, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to get Christmas and, and everything else. So if you know a college basketball player, you know, shout out because – College basketball, uh, college wrestling, which occurs during this time. Wrestling. No, not wrestling, wrestling. No? Okay, my bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, know. Uh, you know, those two sports probably during, during this time, because even, even in track, they start the indoor season beforehand, they get a break. Those mm-hmm. those couple of people who have a swim team, they get a break. Bowling, they get a break. Basketball, it's games. It's games. So, once again, just want to shout out the uh, male and female student athletes who uh, play basketball. It's probably the toughest sport to manage academically and athletically in college. Let me just, I got to quickly read this because I just came across this. Um, the tops, are you, did you used to collect cards, sports cards when you were young? I am so mad at myself, Brian. Uh oh. I had probably 1,500 baseball cards mm-hmm. and, and gave them away when I was about uh, uh, preteen maybe early teen, 12, 13 years old, not knowing, not realizing what I had. Mm -hmm. When I got about 18, 19 years old, I realized what I had given away to my cousin. Oh, my goodness. Who who, who just... I'm scared to ask what you gave away. (sighs) (laughs) I'm a child. I'm a child. A Ken Griffey rookie. I'm a child of the 70s. Oh, so sec- okay. 70s through the 80s, you know, right. I had I had I had my Ozzy Smiths, I had my Pete Rose, I had my uh, yeah. George Brett, yeah. I had uh Were they rookie Schmitt. cards. I, I now you ask too many questions now. Okay, all right, all right. I mean, well, I had a few I had a few rookie cards in there though. Right, right. Um, I my dad was a collector, a card collector, so I I grew up going to the card shows and paying attention. He still collects cards. He still, you know, we, I, we tried to, you talk, you talk about a project from hell. It's, hey, try to sit down with dad and do an inventory of hundreds of cards. And it's like, I, I, look, I, don't we want to pay somebody to do this? I, you know, but shoebox. anyway. Uh, bro, shoebox, uh, you pay what, 29 yeah, yeah. cent when you're going through the grocery store and pick and got your five pack of card and, and hope that your mama would get them that, that was the collect I was. Well, look, it, it's funny. It's funny that you talked about paying that price because this will kind of tickle you a little bit. Uh, Tops, Tops, the maker, one of the major manufacturers of cards, they announced the first ever March Madness trading cards. Uh, reading a story right here off of uh, ESPN. This must have just come out. Um. Under the Bauman brand, Tops has announced the release of the first officially licensed March Madness trading cards available starting Monday. The offering includes 
20 tops NCAA student athlete to a play in this year's NCAA Division I men and women's basketball tournaments. Get this. The cards retail at $139.99 a pack and include, and each includes oh, stop, six. Stop, stop, stop. Just, just, just stop right there. <laughs> Give me that price again. <laughs> The cards retail at $139.99 a pack. $140. And each, yeah. And each include six base cards, one autograph, and one parallel card. Some of the names that you will get, Drew, you'll get Iowa's Caitlin Clark. Uh UConn's Paige Buker and Aaliyah Edwards, LSU's Angel Reese and Haley Van Lith, uh, Stanford's Cameron Brink, and I'm saying names here for those of you who may have heard these names, um, Notre Dame Fighting Irish, Hannah Hidalgo. Uh, these are some of the top women's names, by the way, if you're not familiar with the women's game. On the men's side, you can get Purdue Boilermaker Zach Eady. Uh, Kentucky's Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham, Yukon's Tristan Newton and Stephen Sewell, Duke's Kyle Filipowski, uh, Tennessee's Dalton Connect, uh, North Carolina's Armando Baycott. So, you know, I, I'm just trying to figure out, usually that kind of price is reserved for the box that has several packs in it. I'm really just trying to figure out each pack is 139. One that can't be that must be misquoted somehow, some way, Drew. Because I can't imagine paying 144 pack. Right. That's a hell of an NIL deal for those those people because you know they, they're getting some NIL out of that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it, it that's what it all is. Yeah, the uh this is this this announcement comes on the heels of of Caitlin Clark recently reaching a deal with Panini to be the first female athlete to ink an exclusive contract with the company that will pay her 1 million in the first year beginning April 1. She she will be making more in endorsements drew than she will actually from her salary presumably the Indiana Fever don't screw it up and don't you know they draft her number 1 overall uh she'll be making more off her NIL deal or her or her a sponsorship deal than she will actually playing the game of basketball. So just thought I'd share the power of NIL, ladies and gentlemen, um, the power of NIL. All right. Let's talk about the division one teams that are playing this week. Um, again, uh, as by my count, my unofficial count, uh, and you guys have kind of seen it out there floating about, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten Division One teams playing basketball still this weekend or this week, actually, men and women. So that's ten overall, men and women. Uh, of course, you already get, you already heard about the two. You got Fayetteville State women on the Division Two level. You got the Langston men at NAIA. So Drew, the seedings come out. And let's talk about this first. The men's seeding comes out. Of course, we knew we knew that the men were going to get played, put in the first four. What do you make of the women? The Jackson State Lady Tigers earned a 14 seed, which is similar to what they earned when they were uh, undefeated two years ago. Norfolk State earns a 15 seed, which is their best seed as a women's uh, in the women's program. What do you make of the seeding for those teams? Right, right about where I thought they should be. Honestly, looking at their, uh, their net, the RPI, and uh, some other factors, uh, that's right where I thought they should be. Mm -hmm. You know, the Jackson State did not have the pleasure of what happened on the men's side, helping them out and maybe possibly bumping them up to a 13. 
And what I mean by on the men's side is the fact that, and Dr. McClellan spoke about this. I know you're going to get into this in a second. There were five teams who stole bids Mm -hmm. in, in men's basketball. So, you know, you've got bid majors playing bid majors on the men's side, which doesn't happen. Just doesn't happen. Right. And and essentially what those bid stealers are, the bid stealers are essentially a team, um, a team that was not going to get in via a automatic or a presumed at large. They were out, they were out, they were below the cut line, but they would get the automatic because they won their conference tournament. Right. For for example, North Carolina State in the ACC winning five games in five days. Nobody expected that. I mean, they were like a 10 seed they were not gonna, in the tournament. They were not gonna uh, Long Beach State out west, a 15, uh, no, not a 15 seed, but uh, the coach got fired two days before the tournament. Yes, yeah, they, they, that's and, why and they he weren't was expected. Just, to he was yet. just, co- and he was just coaching just to. For his for his boys, one last run with these, one last ride, and look, they end up winning the tournament. They end up Let's winning go. the tournament, um, and he's gonna get and he's gonna get a new contract. Yeah, so the and and so when that happens, it, it bumps some other teams. Now that doesn't really apply in the SWAC or MEAC because you know, look, those teams. There's a one bid league. It is what it is. Um, right. I think what was interesting listening to people really want, and even in some of Coach Reed's Coach Reed's post game comments after the championship and her, you know, sort of plea. Uh, I, I thought it was more of a plea to 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 try to get a higher seed. Um, what 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 I think everyone has to understand is the seeding has a as as odd as it looks and as un uneven as it can be, like we can talk about certain things within the seeding and how how did you know like how did UConn get seated in a region with three other conference tournament winners, two other teams that were in the final four with them? You know, you can look at that region and say that doesn't make any sense, but there is a formula to all of this, and unfortunately for Jackson State, uh, the SWAC overall as a conference, uh, while it was better this year and it didn't merit them getting into the first four, uh, like, like for example, I'll say this. Had Alcorn State won, right, had they ended up beating Jackson State, Alcorn they State would have been in the first four. Correct. They would have been in the first four. Now, so they got Jackson, rewarded. right? Jackson State was actually rewarded uh, for a being as good of a team and having as good of a season. They were a 14 seed two years ago when they were unbeaten, and they had a similar net and RPI ranking or rating. Okay, um, in order for it, te- here's what would have to happen, and, and this is this is what we got to remember. In order for Jackson State or any HBCU right now to move ahead of a 14 seed and find themselves in, I'm going to use the Gonzaga Bulldogs in the men, right, as the barometer, you have to have a damn near perfect non-conference season because you're going to play teams that if you beat <coughs> they're going to propel you individually higher up the mark or higher up the board the seed board yes you know now if multiple teams do that you get what happened in the uh what is it the 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 mountain west where you get five or six teams that have a non-conference win percentage of 73%. So you can say, how did that conference 
who you could call them a mid-major. They're right outside the power six. How did they get six teams and the Big East only get three? Go look at what you do in a non-conference. So what I'm saying is Jackson State didn't have the greatest non-conference schedule or, or record results. It, it is what it is, right? Um, now, had that had they won those games that they played, we'd be talking a different story. Maybe Jackson State is an eight or a nine seed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Had they and you, I was going to say you said that Gonzaga Butler type analogy. Yeah. And I know they're not supposed to go back and look at past years. But when they get to the tournament, they've got to get some W's. Yeah. Un, uh, under Tabika Reed. Tabika Reed has got to get some W's. And she will she will garner the respect and start moving up the food chain. Right. And should Tabika, should Tabika Reed leave, then whoever replaces Tabika Reed has to keep that ship going. And they have to understand that it's a powerhouse program. And they're moving up. But also, and I'll still say this, Brian, mm -hmm. Jackson State cannot be responsible for carrying all the whole conference. Teams. Yeah. Right. Other teams have got to. Now, they don't have to win at the level that Jackson State is winning, but they've got to get some dog conference wins too. Right. If, if you look at, Quad now. If again, if you're familiar with how they do these, they have everybody broken up into four quads. They say quad one is essentially first top, 75, top seventy five. I, I think it's I think it's less by by some of the research that I've been looking at, Drew. I think they consider quad one kind of a little bit less. It's really like top thirty to top fifty, depending upon if you're home or away, uh, which is kind of interesting. So really, if you combine quad one and two, because quad two is where you get into um, what you were talking about, where you start getting teams in the 70s and the upper 80s, right? Um, Jackson State was one and six. According to the net rankings, one and five, according to RPI. And so I know people like to go to the fact that, you know, they beat St. John's. They beat St. John's. St. John's, who has a practically an equal RPI and net rating as Jackson State. Yes, they beat them. You know, uh, you but but their losses though, you know, are pretty significant. You know, not by large margins, but they did. They they occurred when they occurred, and it affects. You know, so. Needless to say, um, I, I think it they were scheduled where they were. And so I, you know, I, I didn't want to get into any arguments with anybody on Twitter about it. You know, just just enjoy the run. And uh now they play UConn. I think that's that'll be an interesting matchup. Uh I, I I'm gonna give some credit to uh Scotty off script. Uh he did a great breakdown of just that game. I, I thought he really really dug deep and uncovered the matchup for UConn and Jackson State. So if you're interested, I would say if you want to go get a deep dive of that game, uh, and I'm sure there might be some other people that will do some, but he was the first one I saw today that did a good deep dive on that game. So uh, just want to give him some a shout-out for that. All right, let's go to this, Drew. Here's what we got. First four matchup. Wagner, the Wagner Seahawks. You know what? You know what conference they're in, Drew? See if you know. No. Uh, I believe they're part of the NEC. Not the same NEC that was calling Howard to come join them. Ooh, look at you. Hmm. Maybe so. Um, let me see. Wagner. 
is it is that the same NEC where our baseball teams that formerly were MEAC baseball yep. teams were playing? Yep, it is. It is. It is. Uh, Wagner rated two ninety three. You remember what I told you? Who was the lowest rated team in the in the tournament? Uh, it's Wagner. Uh, they finished sixteen and fifteen. Won the NEC. So uh, you, you saying that we got a shot in this game? Oh, well, hey, uh, talking about a shot, Howard opened as a three-point favorite in this contest. Uh, as you can see, the game is Tuesday, 6.40 p.m. on uh, True TV is where you can watch it. Uh, there's a few numbers, a tale of the tape, a little bit about Howard and Wagner. Again, Howard's a three-point favorite. Um, the average... Uh, a few uh, in terms of field goal percentage, um, Wagner uh, might shoot a little bit better, but not by much. Um, you can see term three very similar three point shooting teams. Howard gets to the free throw line a lot more. Uh, your rebounding numbers there, Drew, are very similar. Um, you know, I, I think this will be a Interesting contest between uh, these two teams. But again, Howard opens as a three-point favorite. That game is 6.40 p.m. tomorrow. Any uh, any thoughts you want to add there, Howard versus Wagner? H U you no. You're going with Howard, it sounds like. Hey, oh, yeah. <laughs> sounds like a good bet. Um, on Wednesday, on Wednesday, and I, I think I wrote it wrong here previously on our notes. Uh, so that's the, that's the game, uh, the only game on Tuesday outside of the Fayetteville State women's game. So that that's the, you know, you got Fayetteville State women at five o'clock and then Howard at 640 on Tuesday. On Wednesday. Three teams are playing. Three teams. It starts with the Grambling men who are playing the Bobcats of Montana State in the uh, Wednesday first four contest. That's another 640. It's the first of two games that night. Grambling actually opens. This is their first NCAA tournament appearance. Grambling opened as a three-and-a-half point underdog. So... Uh, the, the favorite is Montana State. Uh, if you take a look at the uh, tail of the tape there in terms of field goal percentage and so on, um, Montana shoots the three a little bit better than uh, Grambling does on a per-game basis. Grambling they does take get more. They take more, they make more. Exactly. That there you go. Take more and make more. That's how you do it. Uh Grambling actually has the rebounding advantage over Montana, Drew. Uh watch watch uh, that stat. Yeah, especially total rebounds and then the offensive rebound stats. Um the assist numbers are kind of interesting. Uh kind of leads you to believe Montana State does a good job of moving the ball um on offense. If I were just kind of looking probably at make it. an extra pass for the three. Yeah, yeah. So um, interesting to see. Uh, let me see. Montana State. Any guesses where what conference Montana State is? Big Sky. You're right. You're correct. Big Sky. Um, Big Sky rated uh, number 213 out of the Big Sky. Um, yeah, Montana, uh, their key player, uh, young man, uh, Robert Ford. Of Montana State. Montana State was actually the uh, second highest rated team in the uh, the Big Sky in terms of offensive efficiency. Uh, so it's kind of kind of interesting to uh, watch them. The Big Sky Conference rated number twenty two overall, twenty two out of thirty three, according to Ken Palm. Uh, just to kind of throw that out there in case anybody wondered. Um, also on Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, 
let me see. Good take here by Kelvin. Um, you know, good to see you, Kelvin. Thanks for jumping in. Uh, the ability of Grambling will be there, but first ever tournament appearance, Drew. That might create some nerves. That might create some nerves. So we'll see what happens. Also on Wednesday. Uh, Brian, before you get into Wednesday, I've got yes. to say this. Go ahead. Do you like your eggs scrambled or fried? Fried. If you're because if you are the NIT, you have got egg on your face for saying you're gonna take. You're not going to do the automatic bid, and you have five quote unquote blue blood big big schools say thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, those bids could have very easily gone to not only our two HBCU conferences, but a couple of the other smaller conferences out there. So, thank you. In IT, I hope you enjoy your breakfast with your egg on your face. Yeah, one of one of those schools, Norfolk State, um, who I believe is is still. I think they're 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 scheduled to play in the. Uh, is are you scheduled to play in the CIT? But it hadn't been officially named yet. Like their opponent hasn't been officially named. Is that what I, believe, I saw? I believe. Yeah, I believe Norfolk is in the CIT. Yeah, Norfolk CBI. and Norfolk's in the CBI. Yeah, well, they're supposed to be in the CBI, but I don't think it's officially. Yeah. Like I know their they opponent want hasn't officially been named yet. Yeah, no, they, they, one of these tournaments has to come up with another set of initials. I don't care which one. Another set of initials. CIT, CBI. One of these tournaments got to come up with another set of initials. Well, well, yeah, you got the college basketball invitational, the college invitational tournament. I mean, what do you want, Drew? Um, the national invitational tournament. Eventually, one day, there's going to be the HBCU invitational tournament, the HBCUIT. Now, see that? Now, see that's way that's way too many letters. Um, but I mean, what do you want? The HBCUAC is too many letters, but we're going to learn to say it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so playing in the CIT um, on Wednesday, Texas Southern, who uh, finished the regular season 16 and 16, 12 and 6 in conference play, of course, losing in the championship game of the SWAC tournament. They're going to take on Tarlet. Tarleton State. Um, that's part of the CIT, the College Invitational Tournament. They play seven o'clock. I don't is know where that is. It Tarleton in Texas? Yeah, I believe so. Tarleton is in Texas. I just don't know where that game is being played at. Um, so I stream. Yeah, I don't. Tarleton State. No, they're part. Let's see. They're part of the WAC. The WAC, oh. um, that game, let's see, I guess they're hosting that. Tarleton had the second best record overall in the Western Athletic Conference, finished 16-4 and four in conference play. So, tells you a little bit about uh, Tarleton State. Uh, that's the same conference where Grand Canyon I know some of you guys may be picking Grand Canyon in your brackets they're in the same uh, Brian, it's, hard, it's, it's hard it's hard for me to advance an online school in my bracket I'm sorry they're not online they're not online anymore Drew they are, <laughs> we remember their roots as an online school though definitely I do remember um you know all, when, when I start advancing DeVry in my bracket then we know a little something. No, not DeVry. No, you didn't just say DeVry. <laughs> uh, also playing on Wednesday, another SWAC school. So it's a SWAC Wednesday. Uh, Alabama A&M, who finished the regular season 11-22, and 9-9, playing Austin P. 
in the CIT as well. Austin P in Texas. I wonder if our if our friend of who's at the Carlos Brown show had something to do with Alabama A and M getting in that tournament since he's on the committee for that tournament. Oh, is he? Oh, didn't know yes. that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, hey, it's an opportunity to keep playing. And uh, so, yeah, Alabama A&M, um, I, I don't know if they're – are they hosting that? Or... Now, now you're asking too much. All right. Austin P is probably the higher-seeded team, and I don't know. Uh, Austin P is out of the, uh, the A-Sun. Uh, finished uh, 19 and 15. Uh, I was overall. about to say OBC. Yeah, I forgot they moved. Yeah. Yeah. 19 and 15 overall. So that is a home game. They'll be playing that game at home. So, um, and uh, Austin P is located in Clarksville, Tennessee, Drew, just in case you wondered. Passing on my way to St. Louis. Right. Okay. No games on Thursday. Friday, on Friday, uh, and I say no games right now on Thursday because we're still waiting on the women's. If Howard, if Howard wins, and if Howard wins, they would play on Thursday. Okay, so there we go. If Howard were to win, which we expect Howard to win, they would play on Thursday. And I didn't look. Who who would Howard play in the next round? Is it North Carolina? I looked it up while you keep going. Look it up. Okay. On Friday, right now, the right now the main game on Friday featuring HBCUs is the Norfolk State women. They play on Friday, March 23rd against Stanford at Stanford in Palo Alto, California. That is a 10 p.m. Eastern tip-off. That game will be on ESPN 2. So that's when the Lady Spartans play uh there. Uh now. On Saturday, you got a host of games being played on Saturday. Uh, the feature game on Saturday. Uh, Brian, that game, uh, Howard Wagner winner will play at 245 Eastern time on CBS against North Carolina. Okay, so I was right, North Carolina. Okay, the Saturday's slate, it's a loaded Saturday with at least three games. We've got Jackson State women taking on UConn wait, in stores, Connecticut. Up? Hold on. Wait a second. Wait. Got back up. Well, hold on. Just wait. Come back to it in a second. Oh, um, I was on Friday. Jackson State women taking on UConn uh, Saturday, 1 o'clock on ABC on the big network, the big channel, big feature spotlight for Jackson State. So, uh, a great opportunity to pull an upset if you think that'll happen. Uh, what that's you, usually what, a solo game. That's usually a solo game during that time. Um, yeah, it's looking at the schedule earlier, game. there's only one other game that's happening at that same time. Yeah. yeah. Um, what What did you want to add? What did you want to add before I give the other Saturday games? I was going to say on fr uh, Friday, should Grambling win, they will play at 725 on TBS against Purdue. Okay. Gotcha. So they went on uh, Wednesday. Okay. Also playing on Saturday, Bethune Cookman's men playing in the CBI. They're 17 and 16, 11 and 7 overall. Bethune Cookman playing Arkansas State, 1 o'clock in the CBI. Now, the CBI is played in Daytona Beach. So, you know, not, not quite a home game, but a home feel, home area. Or Bethune Cookman on Saturday. Also playing on Saturday, Delaware State, runner up in the uh, SWAC tournament, 15 and 18 overall. They will play Seattle, Seattle University in the CBI, uh, 5 30 p.m. So that's when they'll play. Now, Two other schools playing postseason ball. We just done I, at the time that I put this together. I don't know what the actual tournament seating is and the locations are going to be, but Grambling State women and North Carolina AT women are both earned 
WNIT automatic qualifying games. Ah, here we go. Already, see, good timing. A&T Roy jumps in with an update here. A&T will play Friday against crosstown rival UNC Greensboro at Club Corbett. Oh, great opportunity here for A&T. Congrats, A&T. That's a 7 o'clock Eastern game. The WNIT, thank you, A&T Roy, for dropping that. Again, like I said earlier, I hadn't seen it yet. Um so that and I'm so I don't know Grambling. If anybody sees what time and where Grambling, who is Grambling State women playing? Uh, it'd be good to be able to drop that out as well. All right. So uh, any and that that's your schedule. So we've got games Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Thursday, definitely Friday, maybe Saturday. Woo. Grambling plays Oral Roberts on Thursday at 8 o'clock. There you go. The Grambling State women? Yes. All right. Doesn't, doesn't, uh, this site doesn't tell me location, but we know that game is, uh, is happening. Let's see Roberts. if I can go find it. That'll, see if I can go find it. What, what time is that game against Oral Roberts? What time is it again? Seven o'clock? It was either seven or eight. I just switched sites. So okay. that is, I've, I've got it right here. Gramley is at Oral Roberts at eight o'clock Eastern. Okay. All right. All righty. All right. Um, okay. I think that kind of, that kind of does it. Uh, the, any other, I noticed, uh, any other, any other notes? Uh, I, I know there's a few notes in here. Anything else that you wanted to add real quick? No, that's, uh, it, and those games for the WNIT. Let's see. I know the championship game is on CBS sports network. I'm not sure how many of the early round games will be on the CBS Sports Network also. So check check your school's athletic website because I'm pretty sure they will update it with that information on where to watch if there's a pay-per-view that's required for those games, which I don't think there are at the Division One level. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, um, I did have. Oh, I would say I do have one note before we get out of here. Sure, go ahead. I do too. So go ahead. Yeah, uh, with mine is a bit of a somber note. Uh, this came out a few hours ago from WAFF forty eight in Huntsville, Alabama. There was a uh, shooting confirmed at the campus of Alabama A and M one injured and this 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 actually came out about three o'clock today so i don't know how many people actually saw this come across uh the wire and i'll read this directly it's very short uh officials with alabama a m university confirmed there was a shooting monday at night complex west Officials with Alabama A&M say an officer was conducting a routine patrol of night complex on the fifth floor when he heard shots fired below him. The officer responded and made contact with someone in the stairwell. Authorities say multiple shots were exchanged in the stairwell and a person was hit multiple times and transported to the hospital. At this time, it is unknown on whether the person injured was a student or the officer. Officials say the Alabama law enforcement agency is on the scene and will be taking over the investigation. And then uh, Alabama A&M did release a statement. Let's see if I can do this, anything in this statement. Uh, this is a statement uh, from Alabama A&M Public Relations. 
Earlier today, there was an officer involved shooting at the night complex on the Alabama A&M campus, resulting in one injury. The incident occurred during a routine security check provided by the, oh, in the night center and was contained within minutes. Alabama A&M Police Chief Montrez Payton provided the university official statement on the timeline of the events and announced that the investigation is now being managed by ALI, Alabama Law Enforcement Agency. This incident once again about the stress and uncertainty to our campus community. Today's climate continues to present safety challenges to colleges and universities, but Alabama A&M, AAMU is committed to enhancing overall safety for students and for faculty. Our campus police and university staff are to be committed for their efforts to quickly respond to the threat, ensuring safe, student safety and provide, and provide updates. Those who learn and work on our campus are encouraged to continue to monitor our campus alert systems to remain safety aware. Parents are also able to subscribe to the alerts to receive all campus emergency updates. Counseling services are available by calling Alabama a and Student Affairs at the telephone number given. Any questions regarding the investigation should be directed to Aaliyah. No further comments will be will be provided at this time. So uh, let's let's just take a uh, let's just take a pause and uh, say thoughts to those in the normal Alabama, aka Huntsville, Alabama community. And uh, also, while we're doing that, Brian, let's uh, take a moment and. Uh, you know, t today is the unfortunate passing of our beloved brother one year ago today. So if we could, let's just take a moment of reflection uh, for the incident that occurred today and the incident that occurred one year ago today. Go ahead, Brian, with your uh, your story. I, I, I don't, I don't even, I, 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 I nothing I can follow after that, Drew. You, you, you drop that on me. I, I, I feel like next time I'm gonna go before you, uh, when you, uh, before you, before you want to drop stuff like that. Uh, I didn't know you were going in that direction. I had some I, just, notes, but I, I don't, I don't even want to. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, oh, and, and, and uh, excuse me, I did have the day to go. That was one year ago this past Saturday for our long father brother, L. L. Kofi. Uh, my bad, bro. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, should, yeah. you should know not to throw the mic to me because I'm going to do something I, off the wall. Well, I mean, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, good at, uh, EA. I was doing some research. Maybe on Wednesday, I'll uh, I'll I'll address uh, the question you had about the finances of the women's basketball game um, and stuff like that. Or maybe we can get into next week. I, I'm doing do I'm gonna do a little more research. Um, I found a couple interesting notes. I uh, EA's question had to do about the finances of the women's game, uh, which have changed. It, it and I think because of a recent contract renewal the numbers are different but i i, I want to do a little more so give me give me next wednesday show ea i'm gonna see if i are either wednesday or sunday next week uh when we're back on our normal time on sunday and i'll see if i can pull a, a little more data but i will say uh in closing uh if you're able to watch some basketball games uh and support uh, HBCUs, whether this is that point in the season where uh, we can kind of move our our little our hot shots that we like to throw at each other, we can move those to the side. And for this one week, or maybe two, maybe three, who knows? For the end of the basketball season, let's all come together and rally behind uh, being historically black college and university sports fans. So. We will support our brothers and sisters in the SWAC. We'll support our nieces and nephews and cousins 
in the uh, Division II in NAIA or the MEAC or wherever they are, um, we all share the commonalities of being fans of HBCUs. So, and with that, for, for, for some of you all, it is also that time of the year where you remember that your institution may play baseball, may play softball, may play tennis, or may have a track team. And it's time to get familiar with the student athletes and the coaches of those teams. Well said, well said. Um, please make sure to uh, subscribe, uh, rate, review, hit the thumbs up button or hit the like button, depending upon how you're watching us. Again, thank you to everybody watching wherever you're watching. Maybe it's on Twitter. Maybe you're watching on Instagram. You could be watching on X. You could be watching on YouTube or Facebook. We thank you everywhere and anywhere that you're watching and consuming the show. Go check out the BCSN pod zone. And one final reminder, uh, go join our tournament pool, our ESPN challenge, the ONG strike zone uh, on Wednesday the night. Deadline? The deadline is for not only your bracket, but your funds, your payment, uh, Thursday, 1159 a.m. Eastern time. Eastern time. Okay. The tournament, sure the tournament begins on noon. Tournament begins noon Thursday. So you got to make your donation. You got to get your money in. Get your bracket in. You know you're going to fill out a bracket on ESPN. So go ahead and drop one of them in with us. Uh, we're doing a 50% 50, 50 fundraiser going into the Rattler Athletic Fund. Um but yeah, you can also uh you also get a chance to win a nice pot. So and I didn't even add uh and we open this up obviously to any and everybody, but we're offering up a spot to even co-host a show with us. So that could be interesting if you're not a fan you fan. So uh but I'm putting it out there because your your funds would help donate donate towards the Rattler Athletic Fund. So So uh, is real. You want to get on and bust the show up? Make your yes. donation. A and T Jesus. Roy. Who 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 else we got in here? Who's, That's gonna uh, be crazy. That's gonna be crazy. Uh, and talk. Not a fan you band band talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Come on, y'all. Go ahead and bust up the show, Lawrence. <laughs> y'all are crazy. Hey, all right. Thank you uh, for watching tonight, and enjoy the tournament. Fill nah, out nah, your nah, brackets. Nah. Have fun with your family and friends. Chuck we got Hunt. one more to we add. To, Chuck Hunt, we need to see you win this thing. Uh, from Monroe, Louisiana. That, that's yeah. I'm not gonna call Chuck a 16 seed, but I, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm rooting. I, <laughs> you, let's call him a high seed. Chuck may be a high seed. He might be a high seed, but uh, we 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 we're rooting for you. Uh, thank you to everybody. Um, thank you for every, for being a part of the chat room. Thanks for chiming in. Thanks for supporting all that we do. Uh, go check out hbcujerseys.com. Again, hbcujerseys.com. You can see Drew there modeling, uh, modeling that, uh, that very cool shirt there, that Jersey shirt. There's the back of it as well. It just happens to be the swag version of that shirt. So, um, there you go. All right. Thank you, everybody. Go join our tournament pool. Uh, thanks for watching tonight's show. And uh, we'll we'll have more. Uh, Dr. Cavill's inside the HBCU Sports Lab tomorrow night, right here on the BCSN, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, uh, along with uh, the ONG Strike Zone on Wednesday night, 8 Eastern, 7 Central. Be well. Take care of yourself. Enjoy the tournament. Have fun. Peace out. Drop a light, everybody. Well, holla. But you know, you stay on hard.